Good morning. Good morning. Patty, that was a beautiful song. I haven't heard that in the song in a long time. It's one of my favorites in back. Uh, it used to be on Christian radio. I can't remember who did it. Uh, but like I said, there's a few people. Thank you very much. You know why I like this church? Do you see how many deacons we had today? There's one, right? And uh, that one was willing to collect the offering by himself, right? That's not me. That's from the family. That's from the family. How do we turn that off? Competing remotes. But you saw the one deacon was willing to do the offering himself. You know, I'm not sure how he's going to get from this end to that end, but Ray would figure it out. But you saw one of the elders of the church step right down there Amen. and help him out. Amen. That's what I like about this church. There's a lot of other things, too. We are continuing on in our um, journey through 1 Peter. And as we look at our text this morning... Last week, we went over part of this. We looked at Hebrews chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. We looked at this talking about Jesus. Though he were a son, yet he what? He learned obedience. Did you ever think that Jesus had to learn obedience? But that's what the text says. And he learned the obedience by the things which he was. That's why God allows suffering to come into your lives. Because it is one of the greatest tools that God has for us to learn. So when things are hard, when things are painful, when you don't have answers to your questions, and you're wondering where God is at, God is right where He's supposed to be. Nothing comes into your life unless it goes to God first. Do you ever find this text strange where Jesus says to Peter on the uh, night where they had the Last Supper together? He looks at Peter and says, Satan has asked to sift you like meat, but I have prayed for you. Who did Satan ask? There's only one. You understand that? Satan had to go through God before he could touch Peter. Nothing happens in your life without God knowing it. And there are bad things that happen here in this life, but God never forsakes you in that. And God will be with you. And those times when it gets dark, Heard that in a prayer time this morning. That this world is growing dark. Patty said that she doesn't like the way it's making her feel, right? You want to be able to look at the glass half full instead of half empty, is that right? This is why Satan is working as hard as he is, because he is wanting to take that light that you have and extinguish it. If we were sitting here at nighttime, Imagine this, and it was very dark outside, and we shut off all the lights, and there was no lights coming in that window, and the entire room was dark, and you couldn't see anything. That's the way the world is becoming, is that right? Mm -hmm. But what happens when the light of a Christian starts to shine, and one person here takes a lighter and lights that light? Does it not cast light into that darkness? Yes. And wherever that light is, is there darkness around that light? Where that light is, it's light, right? This is why your witness is so important. This is why you cannot fall to the devices of Satan and you cannot let the light inside of you get extinguished. Because brothers and sisters, this is why we keep telling you we are living in the last days. Because Satan is trying to make this entire world dark. What is the contrast between God's children and Satan's children at the very last part of this earth's history. The contrast is the light and the darkness. Satan's children are full of hate, full of anger, and full of darkness. 
And wherever they go, they want to spread that darkness. And if it was Satan's choice, and if he had the power, he would make darkness engulf the entire world. But who stands up against that darkness? If you were to take this room and make it totally dark, and you had one person put on a lighter, and then you had another person put on a lighter, and another person and another person, what does it do to the darkness? It dispels it. This is the difference between God's people and Satan's people at the very last part of this earth's history. The reason why God is allowing this darkness to engulf this world is so it would make the light of his children shine even brighter. That is what you're called for. That is why you're told to be faithful even to the end. Jesus said to those who endure to the end, what's the promise? But if you lose your light, if you lose your hope, and if you lose your connection with Jesus Christ, then Satan has won an extinguishing unknown. But as this world goes on, and the wickedness spreads more and more, the faithfulness of God's people will do the same. We will not only meet their wickedness with righteousness, we will excel and our light will shine brighter than any darkness they can put against it. You guys understand that? That is the promise that God has given you. That is why it is important for you guys to know where you're at in history, what this time is, and why it's so important to continue to be faithful. Are you caught up in the things of this world? Has the world caught you and grasped you? And sucked you in. Nobody knows when the time is going to come. There is a demarcation in the history of this planet. And from this side, you have from here to that demarcation to make sure you're right with God. After this demarcation, and until Jesus comes, there comes a point where probation closes. Is that right? Yes. And you will have no more choice. Your decision will have been made. Thank God we're not there today. You have the choice to make today, right now. Today is the day of salvation. And this is what Peter was talking about in his day to his people, and he still talks about it to us today. Though you were, though he were a son, this is Jesus, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered, and being made perfect. He became the author of what? Eternal salvation unto all them that not believe, but what? Obey. Obey him. Very important that you guys understand that. Call to God, very good, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Verse 20, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for who? For you. For us. Put your name in there. This is an individual thing as well as a group thing. Jesus Christ came to save you. And he came to save me. His love isn't like what you see if you have... How many of you guys like dolls? Okay. How many of you guys like little bulldog puppies? Is there anything cuter than a bulldog puppy? Okay? They got big fat bellies, little tiny legs, and they waddle when they walk. Can you get any cuter than that? You can have a whole group of bulldog puppies, eight or ten of them, and look at them and you love them all, right? And then you could have another group of let's say Great Dane puppies. And, and you look at the bulldogs and you go, oh, I love them too, I love them too, I love them too. And you can just keep putting more puppies in there, right? And then you walk away and never got one of them. But you love them, right? Because you said, oh, I love these puppies. That's not how God works. He doesn't see the entire human race and say, oh, I love them like you love puppies. He sees you as individuals. And he knows who you are, he knows what you are, 
And he loves you enough to give his son for you. This is why you fall in love with Jesus. Because Jesus has fallen in love with you before the foundation of this world. Before you were ever born, Jesus fell in love with you. And he was willing to die for you, to save you so you could be with him throughout eternity. This is why we as Christians are willing to suffer whatever this world has to give us. Because our Savior loves us and we love him too. And no darkness can ever extinguish that. Right? Who by him Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing that you have, what's that next word? Purified. Seeing that you have purified your souls. What do you think that means? What, what happens when you purify something? You clean it up, right? You take away impurities. You take something that, uh, let's say if it was food, uh, that couldn't be eaten, now can be. Let's say if it was a house, that couldn't be lived in, now it can be. Now, you are a spiritual house, right? And before you gave your hearts to Christ, you were still a spiritual house, but you were a spiritual house built up for the devil. Right? And you lived in your carnal natures. And Christ has called you for something totally different. And you have been born again. And now you're building a spiritual house that is worthy of purification, that can have the Holy Spirit dwelling in it. Okay, maybe it's the location of me to one of these objects. Though. See? See that you have purified your souls, and how do you purify your souls? Obey. Obey. Now, is that legalism? Are you sure? You cannot be a follower of Jesus Christ if you do not obey Him. That is not legalism. That is a relationship. If you have someone that you love, but you constantly disobey them, you don't really love them, do you? If you are in a relationship and you're married to a significant other, and you constantly lie to them, and you cheat on them, but you tell them you love them, do you really love them? No. Isn't that what we do to God? Isn't that why God continuously in the nation, in the history of Israel, referred to them as prostitutes and harlots? Because they kept prostituting themselves out to others. Do we not do the same today when we disobey? So do you understand why obeying is so important? Obeying is the fruit that Jesus said you will know them by their fruits. The fruit is in obedience. Say that again. It's something we want to do, not something we have to do. You can never obey God out of your carnal nature. Because the carnal nature is enmity against the spiritual nature. It's constantly at war. Okay? So, Ricky, very well said. Okay, we pause things for a second. Yes. You want to put that thing on? Let me get the little mushroom cat. It's amazing what that little thing does. He's jumping dead. Seeing you have purified your souls and obeyed the truth through the Spirit, you can never have obedience without the Spirit. Amen. You guys understand that? Yes. Okay. 
What did Christ promise his disciples when he said, it is better for me that I go? Because if I go, I can send you another what? Helper, helper or comforter. Okay? Who was he talking about? The Holy Spirit. Why was it better for him to go so he could send the Spirit? Why is that, Ray? No, why could not Jesus fill us all? Why did he have to go back to heaven? This is very important. Because he took on human flesh. Jesus took on human flesh. When he did that, he couldn't be in all places at one time. Right? But who could be? The Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can live in each one of us, and that is why Jesus lives in our hearts. When they say they are one, they mean they are one. Through the Spirit, who's or through the Spirit unto what's that word? That's a, that's a King James word right there, right? Unfeigned. What is that? What does that word mean? Don't ask me because that's why I'm asking you. What does unfeigned mean? Unpretentious. I know what that means. You like you feel affection for people yeah, like any <coughs> yeah. it's So fake. it's not fake. It's, not it's an affection and a love that's not fake. Right. It's not hypocritical. It's not acted. Okay? Right? Now understand this that this is the love that God has for you and that you should have for your brethren. What does the purifying of your soul cause? What is the byproduct of that? It is an unfeigned love for the brethren. You want to know whether you really are converted, whether you really have the Spirit of God living inside of you? What is your love for your fellow brothers and sisters in the church in Christ? Okay? If you're constantly looking at the church as uh, half-empty, then you might not really be converted. If the church is a place for you to continuously cause division, then you definitely aren't converted. But if you look around and you see the people sitting to your left, to your right, in front and behind you, as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, that you're willing to lay your life down for, then you are you have the Spirit living inside you. Okay? So I want to look at that whole text and verse again, verse 22. Seeing that you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love what? One another with a... Now don't you like the way Peter just keeps building on this and building on this? Look at how many adjectives he uses when he talks about how you should love Okay. See that you love one another with a pure heart. What's this word? Fervently. What does that word mean? Fire. Power. Power. Okay. If you were to start a fire here in Florida in July and had it rain for a month, what would happen to whatever you liked? It would burn fervently, right? That is what Christ is calling you to do for your fellow brothers and sisters sitting next to you. And not just us here, but for the entire world who has accepted Jesus Christ. We'll get to that later. Right now, he's talking about the brethren. And if you can't love the brethren, there's no way you're going to love your enemy. All right? So right now, we, we got to make sure you guys can love each other. Then you can go out there and love your enemy. But just realize, look around. The enemy is not here. He is not you guys. And he is not me. The enemy is out there. Right? Keep that in mind. Being what? We have purified our souls in obeying the truth 
through the Spirit, we are born again. And how are we born? This time we're not born of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. We are not born by the will of the flesh. Are you having trouble following me? I'm sorry. <laughs> we are not born by the will of the flesh, which is how you came into this world the first place, and the first time, right? This is why David said you were born in iniquity. You were conceived in iniquity. But the next time you're born, you're born again, but you're born this time through the power of God. You are born by the power that is incorruptible. This is why, as Peter said prior to this chapter, or in this chapter in the very beginning, you have an inheritance that's what? Incorruptible. What does incorruptible mean? It means it cannot be corrupted. What does that mean when it talks about you have an incorruptible inheritance, but you have been born again by, what does it say? Not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed. What is that telling about you and how you had, can deal with sin in your life as you live this life? Are you, because of your fallen human nature, do you have to continue on in sin? Not if you're born again. <laughs> you see me up here in <laughs> Do you guys understand what this means when the Spirit of God actually lives inside of you? I don't think we do, because the Spirit does not work with the same power that He did when He was poured out in the day and do you know why? It's because those people were ready to receive Him. Amen. And they were ready. And I mean ready. And they didn't come to church and then go about their business after. The church and the message and the spreading of the gospel was their lives. Right. They worked so that they could support themselves in the gospel and in the spreading of the gospel. They didn't come to church and then go to work so they can support themselves. That is what we do. Is that not right? Right? And let's face it, Mondays we have Monday night football. Thursdays we got Thursday night football. Sunday we got football all day. But we became an Adventist so we don't watch college football because that's on Saturday. Uh, now if you're not in football, you got soap operas, you got the boys. You got American Idol, you got a ton to figure out. How many people do you know live their lives around their television schedule? Right? Right? Now, this is one of the things I feel really bad for elderly people. When I used to cut grass and just do residential lawns, the uh, majority of my customers were elderly and on Social Security. Do you realize that the majority of them, the only people that ever came to see them on a regular basis was me and no man? Okay, now do you realize I had to stop cutting residential yards because I wasn't making any money because I like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> they like to be visited with and you get a connection with them and you feel sorry for them and, and so and now Every house you went to served you cookies and soda. <laughs> and you were there for 35 to 40 minutes. Now your crew loved it because they're getting paid. You understand what I'm saying? The mailman and the lawman. The only two people that would come and see them. I had one lady, I used to go up to her attic and pull down the decorations for Easter and for Christmas. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody was there. Their whole life revolves around the time. Because that's the only noise that comes in their house. And, and these are Christian people. And it's like, where's your children now? Where's your family? Some of them have outlived everybody. But brothers and sisters, if